we're recording. Hello, hello, and welcome to the channel. My name is Yudi, and I go by Yudi on the Glow. Here on my other social media platforms, so make sure you subscribe to me here. Go ahead, subscribe, like this video. And I have to say Happy New Year. I'm saying Happy New Year the whole of January, so get comfortable. Now, today I want to share with you guys my realistic, <laughs> heavy on the realistic digital planning for 2024. So I've used some strategies and I have a couple new strategies that I wanna incorporate this year. They include the 12 week year, the one big calendar, and the bingo board. So I'm gonna dive into each of those more, but I wanna lead with, this is a heavy emphasis on being realistic. <laughs> because I know myself. So these kind of act like ideas for me to have in the back of my head. And also kind of going through the process for me was kind of like self-care. But the thing is, I know myself. And I'm completely okay if I go through all of this planning and look at this at the end of the year and a few moments in between. Either way, I'm not too hurt. But this is why overall, I'm really trying to take advantage of all the free resources I already have before I go out buying all these planners and all this stuff. And also I feel like with this, I can really customize the ideas to myself. So today I'm sharing my interpretation my approach and my DIY design methods to the three strategies I shared with you guys so far. Diving into the very first strategy is the idea of having a 12-week year. It's kind of similar to looking at your year in quarters, but it doesn't necessarily have to follow a quarterly schedule. That's why some people just refer to it as a 12-week year. It doesn't have to start in January. It can start later, whatever you make it out to be. And I came across this idea on TikTok. I believe the creator's name is Brianna and I'm gonna leave her somewhere on the screen. With this specific strategy, the idea is to have measurable and trackable goals. So if you think about it, if you ever have made goals for like the entire year and you come back to them and you realize some of the things you completely forgot about or you just didn't get around to meeting that goal sometimes I feel like that falls on procrastination and this idea I have a whole year to get this done so that means I must have time so that the months go by and the months go by I still have time I still have time more months go by you think you have time you look up it's November December and you didn't get stuff done so for me I'm always actively trying to avoid procrastinating because it's so easy to be like I have the whole Whole year ahead of me yada 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 and you look up and the year is over so like I said I got this idea from a creator named Brianna she went ahead and made this template where she can check off the things that she did by the day or by the week some of her tasks included things like going on a monthly day drinking water daily hosting every other day so for me I'm gonna show you guys how I made mine so for mine I'm gonna show you guys like my screen so I decided to make one table and then copy and paste that three times so for the first table I just pulled up my calendar and saw what day January started on and what day it ended on so with that, I put in a couple numbers so I can get to 31. So, oh, just to let you guys know, I'm using the numbers application that comes with Apple products. So you'll have this on your iPad or your MacBook. You can use things like Microsoft, PowerPoint, anything that you can make a table on. This is something that you can use. So I went and I filled in my table. I put in the month, put in the days. On top of that, I went ahead and put in the days of the week just so I know what day of the week it is. And after I did that, I added colors to color coordinated just so it's easier on the eyes for me. So with me, since I have like some of the Apple ecosystem, when I work on my laptop, I can also pull it up on my iPad. And the idea was, so I wanna see if I can pull it up on my phone too. But anyway, back to this. So for me, I wanted to keep these to things that are doable and realistic for my day-to-day -day and my weekly. Personally, it is very easy for me to get timeline. It's something I struggle with. Like the day is just going together for me. And it's easy for me to be like, okay, it's Monday. I got a lot of time. Then I look up, it's Thursday, Friday. So even if I'm in a good mood, my days blend together. If, if I'm going through a little funk, my days blend together sometimes my weeks. And that happened to me a lot last year. You know, I was going through it. But that is something I want to stay on top of. And so far, it's been helping me. So, so we're just gonna get comfortable because we're getting to know each other. All transparency out there. For me, the things that I want to work on daily, the first one was making sure that I'm attending church. I'm constantly working on building my relationship with God. It's been a little bit turbulent lately, I'll be honest. But one of the things I wanted to make sure I was doing is attending church in person. For me, fellowship is very important and that's a component I felt like I was missing just watching online. I'm gonna watch online when I have to, but I wanna make sure I'm getting up and staying in that routine of going to church in person weekly when I can. And that's something I did pretty good last year. I kind of fell off at the end, 
but you know we gonna pick it back up a soon year so i wanted to do that and also extension of fellowship for me was attending bible studies and or going to young adult fellowships that were also mini bible studies or just things to further feed my spirit with people my own age so that is something that i'm like you know i can check off the box once a week i haven't been in person yet but we go we gonna turn that around so that was my first one the next thing I wanted to do, I wanted to get at a point where I'm working out three times a week. That's always been a goal. And for whatever reason, it's so hard for me to maintain that. But for me, I'm always constantly thinking through, okay, why didn't this work? Why did I fall off? Yada, yada, yada. And I realized a lot of the times when I started getting on a schedule with the gym, the times that I would fall off would be if I travel, if I fell sick, or if it was that time. That time, I, I can't, I can't, I'm useless. Because if I try to do too much during that time, I'm going to pass out. I'm going to pass out somewhere. And that's not going to be cute. <laughs> so I can't overexert myself. So me realizing that, I know like if I'm traveling, I have to be very aware. Like maybe I can plan my gym workouts around that or do something while I'm away. I can travel nowhere in a minute. So I'm not bothered about that. Um, and then in terms of getting sick, you know, I try to keep myself healthy. You know, because people be out here coughing and sneezing so we we masked up when we out and about and then the other is for when is that time so for me my way around that if anyone else has like crazy pms or symptoms during sometimes i experience extreme fatigue you would think i had the flu or something so what i started trying to do even if it's that time see if i could just go and walk on the treadmill or go and walk the track at my gym just something where i'm still moving and the other thing too as i'm slowly trying to get back in the gym because you know we got weight to lose like i'm not playing on those i need to lose like 30 pounds and y'all not y'all may not be able to see this but i'm pushing 200 i'm three i'm five three and i was looking at my measurements like like prior to the panini and like around then i used to be like a healthy 160 170 and i felt fine and my clothes fit so yeah we got about 20 20 to 30 pounds to lose <laughs> so i'm gonna take my time with that but i'm not you know i'm gonna push myself or anything like that so that's one of the things i'm working on and then i also started just adding random things here and there on this document because i have the ability to so i added a square or two of like different workout routines that i can do so for me in order to prevent procrastinating i try to find ways to make things easier for me and also find the things that kind of derail me so i kind of laid out some things that i can do when i'm working out even if i don't have the full energy to, to go all out or attend a class in my gym or something else what i can do is just make sure i get in there even if i can only do 30 minutes i want to do 15 minutes on a trip Treadmill, maybe 15 minutes on the cycle or break it up by three cycle treadmill elliptical something to get my cardio up because we got to stay moving one of the things that always in my head is the idea of a body emotion stays in motion so when you're not moving it's very easy to just stay where you at like when you constantly on the couch all that stuff you don't want to leave the house because you're comfortable so i keep that in mind so yeah i have like little bubbles of things to remind me of different workouts i can do if i ever forget what to do or just don't have the energy to do anything that's what i'm trying to do to stay on track i also signed up for class class here in atlanta that's been fun so far i've done aerial tips which i really enjoyed that was like my second time doing it i love that i, I want to do more of that i've also done pilates with the reformer which was kind of cool was kind of cool but i thought i'd be working my way up to that and I also did this other Pilates. There wasn't a reformer, but it was kind of like a mix of Pilates and yoga. I call it Paloga. <laughs> so there's that. So it's a lot of stuff on ClassPass and they have a free shout. This is not sponsored, but I remember seeing it in the past and my friend said she was doing it. So I was like, go ahead and do it so I can get up my house. So yeah, with workouts, the plan is to do three times a week and I'm really working and trying to stick to that. Next up, one of my goals for this channel, like I want to be posting once a week, um, but I kind of want to push myself to see if I can do twice a week. But at my baseline, I want to be doing once a week. So, you know, we're recording right now. So that's something I can go ahead and check off a box. So that's what I want to do with the channel. Y'all pray for me. <laughs> I've been trying, but then, you know, it's a brand new year kicking off. And I know, you know, the things that I need to work on, the things that I struggle with, the things that I do well at. So that's the goal. Um, another thing I wanted to do was self-care. I feel like I don't do enough self-care at all. I just don't. And that's something I need to do more of because like the few times like if I go and get my nails done or if I take myself to go see a movie, I realize whenever I'm doing I'm like, dang, I'm so relaxed. And I'm like, I can't remember the last time I was relaxed like this. So one of the things I did came up with a bunch of things that I consider self-care. And I looked them up and I asked some of my friends and I came up with doing my nails, getting a massage watching a movie, doing yoga or meditating. I love eating, so I'm gonna try a new restaurant if I want. Next up, I wanna get back to reading. I haven't read for enjoyment in so long. 
it's actually kind of weird and times that i kind of went through like this little period of time blindness and maybe i was in a funk i'm like dang why is my mood so down and i realized like have i even listened to music this week and music is so therapeutic for me like music is life so sometimes i'm like okay maybe i need to put on a music session or you know listen to a new album listen to an old goodie and just vibe out another one i added on i do like to window shop so sometimes when i'm running errands on the other side of town I'll just window shop. I'll window shop the malls if they have certain stores that all of the malls don't have, or stop by the TJ Maxx's Ross, you know, just being I was just, he was out there. Just get out the house. And another thing I, I think I'll get back to doing. So before I started house hunting, when I was, you know, really trying to get familiar, one of the things I enjoyed doing was going to first time homeowner seminars. Now, with that, granted, I was just getting as much information as I could. And it's kind of like the more you go to those, I would encourage you guys, like if you are looking to buy a house eventually go on eventbrite and look up first time homeowner seminars and see if your city has it atlanta has so many i would just go to just hear the same information get it in my head from different perspectives to really be able to wrap my mind around the whole process because i would say the process the process can be very long it can be a lot of steps but if you know the steps it's not overwhelming it's probably still gonna be overwhelming but it's not as overwhelming and the thing about it these little um first time homeowner seminars Oh, baby, I used to go for brunch. One of them was a wine taste. Actually, several were a wine tasting. A lot of them had creative edges. A lot of them had food. And a lot of them had just resources that anyone could use, especially if you're looking. So I remember I was telling my I was telling my cousin about that recently. So when I thought about it, I was like, you know what? Maybe I can just go to open houses because I do like being nosy, as I said again. But just seeing other real estate and getting ideas, that's a fun part of it too for me. So since, you know, Thank God I already got my house. I think I was just stopped by like random open house when I have free time. And I'm just like, you know, let me see what's going on. Let me see what the market's doing. So those are some of the things that I came up with of things I can incorporate to make sure I'm giving myself time. So I know that's something that I love to do enough. The other thing too is like, I like shiny restaurants, but I'm like, that can't be the only thing that I do for self. Like I got to mix it up. So if you guys have any other ideas or things that you do for self-care, please let me know because I want to add to the list. So I have like a variety of things to look at. And then the very last thing I added on the list were call check-ins. So I am an introvert. And like I said, with time blindness, my days run together and weeks run together, all those things. So I can find it. It's very easy for me to go a long period of time without talking to people like outside of like my bubble. That is something I want to work on more going into this year. And just overall, this has kind of been an ongoing thing. You know, I want to build my social network, my professional network all those things so i also made like a little bubble for myself to remember at the bottom so i have it in different categories and also like i'm gonna call people we remember to call people make sure they okay so i went to a time period i was like i could seriously not be okay so we gotta call people you know and you know so just start that habit and start that practice i feel like that's healthy and when i look at like my mom's generation and stuff that's how they stay connected if they weren't casually popping up at each other's houses they was on the phone and my mom was on the phone so much she used to agitate the heck out of me but i realized that's how she maintained community and that's how she kept it going and stay connected overall i want to build my community and that's been an ongoing thing for me so i put in a list of things just to keep me active and keep me with ideas and keep it in the back of my mind of, of people to check in on and just you know be more social so i have friends i have cousins i have aunts and uncles i I have career and mentors related. So I was talking to my aunt who's a businesswoman, and one of the things she told me, she was like, you can have five people that you're checking in with at least monthly that's related to your career, that are professionals, that are mentors, mentees, whatever the case may be. You just check in on them like, hey, how's it going? Just thought of you today. Or, or just saying, hey, I'm working on this project. Just wanted to share the news. I hope you're doing okay. Some, something as brief as that can really hold a connection. And that is something I wanna work on for my future career and profession. I know these are the connections I wanna build and maintain. So I feel like I don't have too many or the few that I have, I can do better at connecting, you know what I mean? And also my community at church, so I want to be checking in on people I know from church too. And overall, young professionals as well. So if I meet people at different networking events or through a friend of a friend, you know, just kind of staying in contact, especially if, you know, we have similar interests in terms of careers, hobbies, all of those things. So overall, I just want to stay connected. And I feel like this would really help. And so far, I've already noticed a difference. Now, we gonna scroll on over, we gonna scroll on over. You know, cause we being transparent, we getting comfortable, we getting to know each other. So like, you know, we gonna lay it all out there. So I went ahead and made a couple bubbles of things that are like ongoing goals for me to kind of keep at the forefront of my mind for this first 12 weeks, quarter, whatever you want to call it. And some of these are things that 
I didn't necessarily get done last year that kind of carry over. So for instance, I need to go see my OB again. Health as well. So my OB gone is so on top of it. So TMI, but not TMI. I go for my yearly pap smear with my OB gone, and I love her so much. When I say this, like she listens to every word that I say. She listens to every thought. She's just so good. So it's like if she ever retires, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I love her. So for the ladies out there, I feel like it's so important to find a gynecologist or anyone in your medical team. Find the people who you are comfortable with, the people who listen to you, the people who are thorough, the people who are comprehensive the people who pay attention to details so things don't get overlooked when i say i love this lady the way this woman will run my lab for every single thing that there is present at one point i had to chill out i had to show her to hold up so she is so thorough i'm not giving out health advice this is just me my um gynecologist is so thorough that i personally feel comfortable just seeing her once a year so i'm most established with her now also i have asthma but really i got asthma twice a year I forget that I have asthma because it usually doesn't trigger me till like the season changes in the winter, like once, or it triggers me because it's also pollen induced. So it triggers me spring here in Georgia. If you know spring in Georgia, you know spring in Georgia. So typically it's like by the time it starts triggering me, I might just start wheezing one day. By the time I get an appointment with like primary care to get an inhaler or a butyrol, whatever, the symptoms are gone. So it always ends up expiring. So that aside, I am typically good with seeing my gynecologist once a year, you know? Um, if I need anything else, I'll go see primary care. I typically go see her at the end of the year, so I kind of rolled that over to this year, and I want to make sure I'm on top of it and get it done. Next up, I exit. When was the last time you got your eyes checked out? I don't care if you have perfect vision. When was the last time you got your eyes checked out? Your vision, all of that. When was the last time you got that? So, <laughs> so I'm probably going to hold you. I am due for an eye exam. So that is also something in the forefront of my mind that I kind of want to do within this 12 weeks, make sure I'm on top of it and I don't keep pushing it off. But just to put this out there, you know, just put it out there. This, is, this isn't health advice, you know, but if you have never gotten your eyes dilated and had a comprehensive exam, please do so. I used to work in eye offices and I can tell you right now, there are so many things that you can see so many other conditions that you can see once you get your eyes dilated. So if you've never gotten that done, I would say just consider it, see what your insurance covers, see what you can pay out of pocket, even if you have great vision. If you have great vision and you haven't updated that prescription, come on baby, let's update the prescription. It's 2020, whoa, and we trying to see 2020. I don't think I'm seeing 27. Anyway, too much, too much information. So yeah, and then also like, you know, I have beef with insurance. I have beef with auto insurance. I have beef with health, all of them. I have beef. But a lot of times, depending on how my insurance was set up through whoever I was working for, like I said, my gynecologist, that lady loved to run labs on everything. And I thought I was cool and everything was covered. And so I started getting some of them lab bills back that weren't covered. So the way it worked out for me, there were some things that she would try to run for my blood work that my primary care could run and it'll be covered by my insurance. So there are certain things I would tell her, hey, I already got this run, I'm gonna have them send you the results or hey, I'm gonna see primary care soon, they will send you the results. So really pay attention to your insurance. Sometimes just take a day, call them up 15, 30 minutes and see what all is covered. Cause sometimes you can get more stuff covered through primary care visits than you can with specialty visits. See what works for you, but we wanna stay healthy 2024 and onward. So that's what I have. Next up, I need to get an oil change. And I'm not going to tell you the last time I had an oil change because you would judge me and you would have every right to judge me. So, um, Old Faithful been Old Faithful. Mina, she didn't, she didn't. I'll do the thing sometimes she ain't too faithful. But, um, I know she need an oil change. But the cost of oil changes went up. And I don't really like that. Oil, I used, it used to be like $60, $70. You know, you, and sometimes they say you like, you know, a little coupon in the mail. Um, now it's over a hundred dollars. I said, this is a, Mina? It's a 2013. What was that sound? Hello? Anyway, I need to get an oil change. So <laughs> next up, one of my ongoing goals has been learning to swim and I did start swim classes. I am like a week in now. I took a swim class in 2020 in January, but that kind of came to a halt because, you know, because of COVID. And then on top of that, the class I took, like you wasn't gonna learn from that. And then I took another class and I feel like right when I was starting to get the hang of certain things, the class is over and I couldn't get into the class in my county. 
So what I ended up finding when I would ask different people, okay, how did you learn how to swim? How did you learn this? Where did you go? A lot of people said they learned how to swim from the YMCA. And a lot of people I know who said they learned how to swim from the YMCA. They said you got to go back to the neighborhood. That's where you really, really learn. So when I tried doing that, it was a lot of rigmarole, a lot of round away type stuff we gonna call you back to never call you back you show up oh you got to be a member for this you got to be a member for that oh this fee this monthly fee it was too much and the people i know who said they learned they're like oh i just paid 100 i just paid 200 i'm like oh that's doable i never really got a clear-cut answer back and the prices have gone up so i'm just like and y'all y'all acting kind of faulty or you're saying oh we have classes open now but we have classes open in the next three months well i won't have to schedule in the next three months so what i ended up finding i don't know if every county has it but at least for my county and the counties around me they all have aquatic centers and if you go in your county there's a discounted rate so to go in my county and some of the surrounding counties is under a hundred dollars and the classes are typically maybe four weeks to six weeks so that's something i'm still working on all the swimmers if you have um any advice you know send it my way but also i feel like we too old now like i don't know okay i'm not gonna say it i feel like it could sound like i'm a killjoy but i've gotten to the point where being an adult and not knowing how to swim and thinking it's funny i don't find it funny what you mean you don't know how to survive if you fall in water i, I like the idea of that so and even the people that i talked to like i was talking to my aunt and when i was talking to my friend i was like you want to do this swim class with me everyone's like okay but my hair i'm like baby they got swim cats for that they got new swim cats you're like okay but i don't um i need bathing suits whatever or I, you know i don't want to be in a one piece baby she ain't got bathing suits uh target got bathing suits uh if you don't want to have it all hanging out you can go get you some nylon shorts from target from amazon from walmart like we can't have the same excuses unless you got a medical reason so um, it's us in our community we don't know how to swim let's learn together let's stop using that excuse for me i start giving everybody accountability after 25 after 25 there's no more excuses because there are too many resources out there so um if you don't know how to swim i encourage you to learn learn this year learn this quarter or next quarter I, I was gonna say next year but you know we trying not to procrastinate so if you are on the journey of learning to swim let me know and i'm trying to give you guys like swim diaries and it, it'll probably be like more like my feedback after every class because some of the classes like i can't i can't record because i'm in the water and i'm probably drowning um <laughs> or in the water embarrassing myself but um i've been making progress so those videos will probably be me just telling you guys like how the class went or you know all that stuff so that's something i'm working on too and then also Bring on my passport. You know, I've been through things. If my passport is expired, my passport has never been expired. 2023 was a year. <laughs> it was a year for real. So as I was doing that, moving on, I made just another list of things to keep in mind of places I might want to go this year. I doubt I'll be able to go to all of them, but it'll be great if I can go to one or two. So of course, Jamaica has my heart. Jamaica's always had my heart. Jamaica and Brazil, for me, felt like the closest things to home which is Nigeria, before I got a chance to go home. Um, and even even after. So Jamaica, I want I just want a good old girl trip. I want a girl trip where it's like you wake up the next morning, like we had a time last night. That's the kind of trip I want. And I'm hoping maybe I can go somewhere for my birthday. My birthday's in April. You know, if you want to give me something, my birthday's in April. It's a big birthday. Um, Greece has always been on my list. I also have Morocco and Thailand. And St. Lucia, I feel like St. Lucia would be dope. So yeah, we see when we get into 2024 because I need a complete 180 from 2023 because it was ghetto, but it wasn't living. I don't know what that was and I'm leaving it back there. Next up, I have, I guess, larger purchase items that I'm kind of keeping in mind as well that I might see if I can get this quarter or see once the quarter is over if it's still things that I want. So y'all, there's this one video. <laughs> One video had me procrastinating so i thought i was gonna describe the video late november the way that thing kept crashing my computer and i'm still winding it down i gave you guys a whole announcement talking about y'all ready for the video am i ready no so i think eventually i want to get an imac like you know the mac was that like the mac or the apple desktop to just continue editing and also invest in the channel and invest in myself i have been hearing people talk about this crucial hard drive i saw someone talking about it and it's so much smaller than the hard drive that i have so i, I kind of want to try that out but hard drives they be pricey and like i'm not trying to get the one terabyte so i'm trying to get the four or five terabytes so if anybody who's like into creation 
you know them things get up in price. So I'm trying to make sure it's actually worth the price before I get it and it has all the specs I want. And one of the things I want to work on is lighting. So there's something I want to get, but it's one of those things where it's like, I want to invest in myself, but also I need to show that I'm able to be productive with myself with what I already have. So eventually I might look into other lighting in ways to like just breathe more into the channel and like, you know, up the quality. And also like, I mean, all fact about me, I don't have an air fryer. And I, I feel like part of why I don't have an air fryer is like decision fatigue. Because I remember when the air fryers first came out, I saw the ones that were like a combo. And I was like, okay, I want a combo that has everything because I don't want to have all this stuff on my countertop. But in between, like I want something that also is, has like a pressure cooker, you know, like those ninjas. But then I also want something that has like um an air fryer in it. But then I also want something that has a rack. So I think I might have to go the route of getting one. If I can find one that has a rack in it with the baskets as well, and then get a pressure cooker later or vice versa. I don't know, but the reason I don't have an air fryer is really too cool. And I feel like I'm the only person who doesn't know air fryer. But be okay, stop going right now then. Okay, there's that. As I said earlier, I'm trying to, you know, lose weight. So I'm still working on this area and filling it in, but I figured I can color coordinate it with the different month and just kind of have like a check-in of like my weight and measurement at the end of the, each month to see like my progress. So yeah, there's that. I'm not sure how I want to format that yet. If I want to do a like with these boxes or put it in a table. So yeah. So the next strategy I have to share is the one big calendar. Now this is also something that I saw mainly on TikTok, but I feel like it could be a major game changer because you're just able to see the entire year at once. I tried looking online to find empty calendars for 2024 that I could possibly print out and just fill in or download and fill in on like my device. And I feel like it's something that I'm probably gonna come back to and see if I still kind of want to use that. I feel like it'll be a great tool to like list down your major events, your major holidays, your major trip, just a way to keep an eye on all of your major events throughout the year. But in this, I feel like I'll have something a little bit similar on the 12 week year route where as I go through this first three months, I'll be able to add the next three months onto the same document and compare directly. So one big calendar is something I'm considering. I know someone sells them. If I, if I can find the link, I'll add it. But I think the biggest takeaway is just being able to see your whole year at once and be able to add notes, be able to add events, be able to schedule things in and just see how your year is going as a whole so you know it's a strategy to use i may not use it i'm not too sure yet but my approach was to just find empty templates online which i did because i didn't feel like making it from scratch i mean you could but i didn't feel like it after recording i came across this creator she did the one big year approach using a trifold and printouts of the different months and similar to the 12 week year or a quarterly year she added in quarterly check-ins which i think is pretty helpful this is another option made very easy and very simple to diy at home and last but not least i have the bingo board and i feel like this is one of the easiest things to do and it's actually kind of fun so really all you need to do is make a table that's all you need to do. There is no need to buy one and you can jazz it up however you like. So I'll show you guys the one I made last year. Let me see. I don't know if y'all can see it. Oh, that's what I made. Ooh, okay, hold on. So I kind of made the background pieces and you know, it was fun, whatever. So I added the different circles and I just started writing in the circles. So it was really fun to go through the process. I added two words that I wanted to make sure I kept in mind throughout the year. And those were proactivity and discipline. So those are things I still need to work on, but I was very proactive last year and I saw how that paid off. Now I just gotta add the discipline in it too. But it was just really fun to make them because at first I didn't really have any New Year's resolutions for last year. And so once I made all of the dots and stuff, it kind of forced me to put in different things. It really got me to dig deep and think harder and like, you know, things I want to accomplish. So for me, I completed a few. A lot of them I didn't get done such as like learning how to swim, I didn't finish learning how to swim. But a lot of the other ones, they're kind of dependent on stacked up on other goals. So I didn't get a lot done, but there's some things that are continuous, like building my community, traveling more, finding my tribe, building my YouTube channel. Let me see. I wanted to take more pictures. I wanted a new car, but I don't want a car note. So I feel like a car, it's gonna fall from the sky into my driveway, completely paid off um, with um, an allowance for maintenance. That's me in my fairy tale. That's me manifesting, you know. I don't want a car up, but I want a new car. I want an electric car, Audi, EV, e-tron. Audi, e-tron, thank you. All black, blacked out rims, blacked out grill, black seats. You know, I'm just putting it out there. So um, yeah, there were things that I wanted. Oh, I wanted a bag. I ain't get no bag. 
<laughs> so those are things that I wanted to do. I wanted to declutter my closet. Y'all know the whole year went by I didn't declutter my closet. I'm filming that next. <laughs> because it's gotta go. It's gotta go. So yeah, those are different things. And it was just so easy to make. And going through the process in and of itself was therapeutic. It was fun. And the idea of it, even though I made it on my iPad, the idea was I could have it on my iPad. Um, and then kind of send it as a picture to my phone. So as I go through things, cross it off. And honestly, when I made it, I only looked at it a couple times and then I wasn't using my iPad a lot. So I kind of forgot about it, but it was really cool to look at it at the end of the year to see what I got done, what I didn't get done. So that's what I mean. I'm being realistic with myself. Some things I may not look at daily, but I feel like for the most part, I'm probably gonna keep a lot of things just on my laptop because I use my laptop the most. It's almost daily. So I can just check things off, like just keep it open on one of the screens or whatever the case. So in terms of making this happen to you with the resources you have, of course you could probably go and buy someone else's template but I feel like kind of going through the different steps and customizing it to yourself is part of that self-care is part of that time to reflect and think on things you want to get better at things you want to improve things that you didn't complete from last year so if you want to start off by taking advantage of free resources what's already out there or what you already have I would recommend looking at Apple numbers if you have an Apple product it comes with it look at Apple numbers look at Apple pages they have so many things in there there's also a free form that comes on Apple products I haven't necessarily used it, but you can really make it out to be whatever you want it to be. Next, I would say look up free calendars. If you just want to have an empty calendar to write things in, if you want to have a calendar of the entire year all in one space, just look up 2024 calendar, 2024 calendar template, or an empty calendar for each year. You can find it online free of cost. Another thing that I have used, I use Notability just because I already have the app. So the app for me is under a subscription, but since I have that, that's what I used to make my bingo board last year. So if you have something like, like Notability, um, GoodNotes or any note taking app already on any of your devices, take advantage of that. The other thing too is I know Notability and I'm pretty sure GoodNotes too, they also have templates of planners that you can use for the year that are like digital planners that other people have already made that you can download i looked through those i didn't see anything that necessarily matched me but you may find something that works for you so if you have any of these note-taking apps look through their templates and you may be able to find something that has a lot of the stuff already in place for you so look up planner look up calendar look at that and the other thing with those apps if they operate on the cloud you should be able to kind of toggle back and forth through your device whether it's your ipad tablet laptop things like that or you can just get your template situated and print out a blank copy and then fill it in by hand or get it situated type in what you need to type or write out what you want and then print it out and put it at your office desk or put it in your room or somewhere that you frequent often you could put it at the door that you usually exit the house the most so you can just make sure you're up to date i know my best friend she does something similar where she kind of compiles it all into one pdf she used canva so you can also look on canva canva has a lot of templates and a lot of templates for free make you something cute something that you you feel happy to look at print it out and just put it on your desk whether you have it laminated she has hers in a stand so she's constantly seeing it so she has like her goals she has her affirmations and things that you know will motivate her throughout the day so she can look at it at a quick glance some other things you can use if you have microsoft microsoft word powerpoint excel are all great tools and really any word processing app that you have take advantage of that and even your email calendars that kind of come with outlook and gmail there are ways you can customize those to make them work in your favor and again like i said you can always just print something out for free online and just customize it to your liking so that is all i have for today these are things i'm going to try and incorporate and kind of stick to as much as i can in terms of planning and moving in 2024 so far i'm finding the 12 week year to help me so much and keep me on track but i feel like the biggest takeaway from this is just sitting down and having time with yourself even if it's just an hour to go through what you want to get done this year what you want to get done this month what you want to see yourself improving, what you could do better, what are things you didn't get done last year, and think through ways on how you're gonna work to make sure those things get done this year. Just kind of go through that process in and of itself. And I feel like that alone is therapeutic, that is self-care, it's all of the things. So I hope some of these tips were helpful, especially if you're gonna DIY some of these projects. If you have tips for staying on track, um, time blindness or procrastination, please share those because I need all the help and I'm sure we can learn from each other. And if you've already done some of these strategies like the bingo board, or the 12 week year, 
Tell me how those worked out for you or do you have any strategies or pointers on how to stay on track and keep these things going? Please let us know in the comments down below. But yeah, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Go ahead and like this video and continue telling your friends to tell a friend on the telephone so we can all have fun. But otherwise, cheers to a great year ahead. I'm going to leave some videos for you guys to check out on the screen. But until next time, bye guys.